Hi, in this video, I'm going to go over how to test levels in Geometry Dash and how to do them quickly. As you can probably tell from my most recent videos, I've been quite invested in testing the most popular platformer levels. Considering how this is a very new concept with a new game mode, I thought I'd make a video on how to do it yourself. Before you begin, you're going to need to get Ybot. This is currently the only bot that has been ported to 2.2, as well as the only one that supports platformer. It's very likely that other bots get ported, such as Mega Hack Replay, but for now, this is all we have. If you'd like to get Ybot yourself, you can go to the Discord server in the description for more information. When you have Ybot, the first thing you want to do is to go into settings and enable platformer practice. This enables you to use practice mode in platformer levels. Robtop is going to add practice mode himself soon, but for now you just need to have this on. This allows you to simply hit a keybind to restart instead of going into the pause menu and clicking the button there. I also recommend setting some keybinds for toggle frame advance and frame advance if you use that. Once you've done that, you can set the FPS and macro name to start recording. If you want to use FPS higher than 2 40, you can because the bot has physics bypass. You simply enter the name here and then click record and enter the level. Once you end the level, you can see that you can enter practice mode here. Now you can see I can go right easily, set a checkpoint there, reset, go left, set a checkpoint there. You can hold from checkpoints, so I'm holding right here. You can jump and set a checkpoint and then keep holding from there. Once you have recorded your macro, you simply go back to here and click stop recording. Then you click play and go back into normal mode. And as you can see, the robot is now moving on its own. With that out of the way, let's see how to actually be fast by botting I Wanna Be The Guy. When you enter the level, it's very important that you set your speed hack to be very low, like 10%. This will allow you to do timings much easier. When you enter practice mode and restart, it's vital that you only start holding on the second frame that the timer is at 0.00. .00. If you start holding any earlier, your macro will break as the input doesn't get recorded. Now that we're here, as you can see, we are playing the game very slowly. Utilizing this, we want to try and do timings as tight as possible. The key to getting fast macros is to try and keep your momentum and acceleration as fast as possible. For example, on this jump, I want to jump as early as possible like that, hold left from this checkpoint, and then try to hold right as early as possible. You may need to try multiple different frames like here, and then hold right until you make it. That is the fastest way to do that jump with the most acceleration. Now that we're at this jump, we want to do it as low as possible. As you can see, we are too close to the spike of the start and thus we clear it by too much. So we want to start jumping earlier in order to have a lower jump. When you make it over, you want to start holding left immediately and then hold right and jump as early as possible to have the lowest jump. You basically repeat this process for each jump. It's also sometimes faster to let go of right like here in order to get a lower jump frame. Here, for example, we want to jump as low as possible in order to make it over. So this is the correct frame to release. For jumps like these where you're going up to a platform, it's not as simple as just holding here and releasing as early as possible. In order to actually do it as fast as possible, you want to be to the left of the platform and release jump as early as possible, then make a combination of right and left inputs to just barely get on it and jump. If you're unable to make the jump like there, it may be more optimal to spend more time on the block. And now we've made it and we should jump as low as possible here. The same kind of strategy as before applies here where we want to jump as low as possible. Once we've figured out the right frame to jump, we then want to try and hold right as early as possible to still make it over the spike like that then we keep holding left to get to the block and release as early as possible and we should have enough to make this jump now that we've done that let's see the final result Pretty optimal, I'd say. Now, obviously, not every level is going to be like I want to be the guy, but there's still generally one rule which always applies. Keep as much momentum and acceleration as possible. Let's take this jump to the platform, for example. If we jump too early and just barely make it to the platform, we'll have to hold left for too long and thus lose time. If we jump too late, we'll be in the air for too long and also lose time. So you need to find the exact frame where you can start holding right as soon as possible and be on the platform for as little as possible while still making the next jump. As such, the entire concept of tassing becomes what is the most optimal way to pass each section. Every level is going to have different mechanics and different things you'll need to do, and you need to figure out how to adapt to each in order to create the perfect task. For example, this section is unlike any other platformer level we're at right now. You force into this low gravity dash orb that rotates and need to try and pass this section. The question now becomes where to click 
hold or release from the sash orb in order to pass this section. When bonding this myself, I chose the most optimal lines to take, such as holding here in order to go all the way to the right, and clicking here as soon as possible in order to get as close to the spike and get up here as soon as possible. As another example, in Chromicide, which has a dash orb mechanic, I wanted to click this as little as possible in order to just barely make it to this platform and jump as early as possible. For the next dash orbs, I clicked them as early as possible, holding for as long as I could until the very edge, where I then did a release and click on the same frame. This serves as the most optimal way to conserve speed. Another big part of tasking now becomes trying to find skips. For example, with the stash orb, you're supposed to just click there and hold up to here. But in my task, I found I could actually double click it in order to get normal gravity, and fall down here much faster. As another example, I found out you could fall through this small gap in order to skip a piece of the gameplay. To optimize this as well, I held this dash orb for as long as possible such that I could just barely not touch the saw. As a final note, not only is Wybot capable of botting levels, but it can also record them as well. The render tab available in Wybot Pro allows you to record a perfect showcase of any level, and it works with platformer mode as well. You simply put in the macro name here, choose all the settings you need from resolution, FPS, bitrate, fade in, fade out, color fix, and arguments, and then click record to start showcasing. It will seem to be a grey screen, but don't worry, it is rendering the showcase. Once you have finished, you can simply close the game, and if you go Go to your geometry dash folder from its y dash and you go to ybot videos you'll see your showcase here and now you have a perfectly rendered showcase of a level you just tasked so that's how you task and showcase levels for any level you task you're going to have to adapt to the mechanics and situations it provides and the most optimal macros conserve acceleration and momentum as much as possible once again if you'd like to be able to do this yourself you can look in the description to see a link to the discord server for ybot as a final note, here is a task of one of the hardest platformer levels currently, Tower of Infinity. I hope you can use this showcase in order to see the best way to task many different game modes and mechanics.